Hello students, let us take up the first lecture on photosynthesis where we will study about the significance of photosynthesis. To start with, let us see the introduction. For the existence of life on earth, conversion of light energy coming from the sun needs to be converted to chemical energy which is usually stored in chemical bones of reduced compounds like glucose. Among the prokaryotes, many bacteria like cyanobacteria, which are also known as blue-green algae, are capable of undergoing photosynthesis. In eukaryotes, all algae and green plants can undergo photosynthesis. So, the best known form of photosynthesis is the one carried out by higher plants and algae, as well as by cyanobacteria and their relatives, which are responsible for a major part of photosynthesis in oceans. As almost all organisms require energy to do work, they obtain this energy directly or indirectly through photosynthesis as it is the only process that can convert solar energy to chemical energy. The term photosynthesis is a synthesis of two words with photo representing the light reaction and synthesis representing the Kelvin cycle or literally it means synthesis using light. With a series of many energy transducing reactions, light energy is transformed into stable form of energy by the photosynthetic machinery that can last for hundreds of millions of years. So, photosynthesis can be defined as the physical chemical process by which photosynthetic organisms like plants, algae and photosynthetic bacteria use light energy coming from the sun to drive the synthesis of organic compounds in a complex set of reactions. Photosynthetic organisms are capable of synthesizing the organic material from inorganic substances like carbon dioxide by reducing this gas to carbohydrate in a rather set of complex reactions. Electrons for this reduction reaction ultimately come from water in plants such as green algae and cyanobacteria or blue-green algae, which are then converted to oxygen and protons and is known as oxygenic photosynthesis. In some photosynthetic bacteria like purple bacteria, green bacteria and gram-positive bacteria, they can use light energy to extract electrons from compounds other than water like sulfur and is known as anoxygenic photosynthesis. The photosynthetic process depends on a set of complex protein molecules and pigment molecules that are located in and around a highly organized membrane, the thylakoid membrane. One of the most important pigments for harvesting sunlight during photosynthesis is chlorophyll. The most active photosynthetic tissue in higher plants is the mesophyll of leaves as these mesophyll cells have more chloroplasts which contain the chlorophyll pigments. Chloroplasts have a double membrane envelope composed of an outer membrane and an inner membrane. In addition to this membrane, another membrane system is present inside the chloroplast which are thick sap structures called thylakoids and they are stacked together to form granum. Stroma is also part of chloroplast which is the spaces between the thylakoids and closed by the inner chloroplast membrane. Through photosynthesis, light energy is transformed to chemical bond energy in the form of ATP and NADPH. Later on, this ATP and NADPH are used to produce complex organic molecules such as glucose. The following equation summarizes the chemical reactions photosynthetic organisms use to make ATP and organic molecules. There are three distinct events in the photosynthetic pathway. The first one is the light capturing events. 
Light energy coming from sun is captured by the photosynthetic pigments present in the thylakoid membranes of chloroplast, leading to drive photosynthesis. The photosynthetic pigments absorb part of the visible light depending on the type of pigments as visible light is a combination of many different wavelengths of light which appear white light and seen as different colors when it is separated. So, the colors of the photosynthetic pigments that we observe also depend on the type of pigments they absorb at different wavelengths of absorption spectra. The most common type of photosynthetic pigment is chlorophyll, which is green in color. Among the different types of chlorophyll, chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B are the most common and abundant ones, which absorb strongly in red and blue portions of electromagnetic spectrum and reflects green light. Because of this, chlorophyll containing plants are green in color. The photosynthetic pigments other than chlorophyll A are known as accessory pigments and include different chlorophyll types like chlorophyll B in green algae and higher plants antennae while other algae may contain chlorophyll C or D. In addition, there are many non-chlorophyll accessory pigments such as carotenoids in higher plants or phycobiliproteins in algae which also absorb light and transfer that light energy to photosystems chlorophyll. This accessory pigments work in conjunction with chlorophyll A. The carotenoids absorb mostly blue and blue-green light while reflecting the orange and yellows. The presence of these pigments is generally marked by the presence of chlorophyll, but in the fall, when chlorophyll disintegrates, the reds, orange and yellows show through. Accessory pigments are also responsible for the brilliant colors of vegetables such as carrots, tomatoes, eggplant and peppers. They also serve to absorb and dissipate excess light energy or work as antioxidants. The combination of chlorophyll A and the accessory pigments are used by the photosynthetic organisms to absorb most of the visible light for photosynthesis. The structure of the chloroplast is directly related to both the light capturing and the energy conversion steps of photosynthesis as all the photosynthetic pigments are found in the thylakoid membranes of this organelle. In the light capturing events, the photosynthetic pigments capture light energy and some of the electrons of the pigments become excited. The chlorophylls and other pigments involved in trapping sunlight energy are arranged in clusters and form two photosystems known as photosystem 1 and photosystem 2. These two photosystems have different absorption maximum with photosystem 1 at 700 nanometer and photosystem 2 at 680 nanometer. Photosystems serve as energy gathering center and allows the pigments to trap the sunlight more efficiently. These photosystems convert light energy into chemical energy. This photosystem act as a large antenna by gathering the light harvested by many individual pigment molecules. The absorbed light energy is used to power the transfer of electrons through a series of compounds that act as electron donors and electron acceptors. The next is light dependent reactions or light reactions in short. The light reactions of photosynthesis also take place in the thylakoid membranes inside the chloroplast. Most of the proteins required for the conversion of light energy and electron transfer reactions of photosynthesis are located in membranes. The electrons which are already excited during light capturing events are transferred to modified form of chlorophyll called Phaophytin, which passes the electron to a quinone molecule starting the flow of electrons down an electron transport chain that leads to the ultimate reduction of NADP to NADPH. In addition, this creates a proton gradient or energy gradient across the chloroplast membrane which is used by ATP synthase in the synthesis of ATP. The formation of ATP in this process is known as photophosphorylation. 
the chlorophyll molecule ultimately regains the electron it lost when a water molecule is split in a process called photolysis which releases an oxygen molecule as a waste product. The ATP and NADPH molecules move from the grana to stroma to take part in light dependent reactions. The next is the carbon fixation reaction or Kelvin cycle. The carbon fixation reaction which is also known as Kelvin cycle uses the high energy compounds of ATP and NADPH formed during light dependent reaction to convert carbon dioxide and water into large organic molecules. The Kelvin cycle takes place in the stroma of chloroplast which is the aqueous region that surrounds the thylakoids. The carbon fixation reaction are a series of oxidation reduction reactions which combine hydrogen from water molecule carried by NADPH with carbon dioxide from the atmosphere to the sugar. The enzyme Rubisco captures carbon dioxide from the atmosphere using the newly formed NADPH and releases three carbon sugars which are later combined to form sucrose and starch. Carbon fixation produces the intermediate three carbon sugar product which is then converted to the final carbohydrate products. The simple carbon sugars produced by photosynthesis are then used in the forming of other organic compounds such as the building material cellulose, the precursor for lipid and amino acid biosynthesis or as a fuel in cellular respiration. Cellular respiration occurs not only in plants but also in animals when the energy is produced for various activities of life. Next, let us take up the significance of photosynthesis. The capture of solar energy by photosynthetic organisms and its conversion to the chemical energy of reduced organic compounds is the ultimate source of nearly all biological energy. So, the process of photosynthesis provides the main input of free energy into the biosphere. Photosynthesis provides the energy and reduced carbon required for the survival of virtually all life on our planet Earth, as well as the molecular oxygen necessary for the survival of oxygen consuming organisms. Photosynthesis and heterotrophic organisms live in a balanced steady state in the biosphere. Photosynthetic organisms trap solar energy and form ATP and NADPH which they use as energy sources to make carbohydrates and other organic compounds from carbon dioxide and water. During photosynthesis, oxygen is released into the atmosphere. Aerobic heterotrophs which include most of the living organisms including humans use oxygen so formed to degrade the energy rich organic products of photosynthesis to carbon dioxide and water generating ATP. The carbon dioxide returns to the atmosphere to be used again by photosynthetic organisms. Solar energy thus provides the driving force for the continuous cycling of carbon dioxide and oxygen through the biosphere and provides the reduced substrates such as glucose on which non-photosynthetic organisms depend. The amount of energy stored by photosynthesis is enormous. Each year, more than 10% of the atmospheric carbon dioxide is reduced to carbohydrate by photosynthetic organisms. More than 1017 kilocalorie or 4.2 into 1017 kilojoule of free energy is stored annually by photosynthesis on earth which corresponds to the assimilation of more than 1010 tons of carbon into carbohydrate and other forms of organic matter. The fossil fuels currently being burned to provide energy for human activity were produced by ancient photosynthetic organisms. Let us now see the conclusion. Photosynthesis is the most important reaction on earth as it provides energy for the survival of most of the living organisms. Oxygen is also released during photosynthesis that is required by all aerobic organisms including human beings. 
the photosynthetic organisms which include plants algae and photosynthetic bacteria capture solar energy to make food molecules which is rich in chemical energy through this process 100 billion tons of biomass is produced annually so it is very important to study the detailed process of photosynthesis thank you